bring functions to life. Controlling a laser is a hands-on activity where students use mathematical functions to specify motions. They design and test mathematical functions that specify the motion of a laser in a manner similar to industrial, medical, and other applications. The software used is the function plane program with a setup file named Control a Laser. The hardware is the basic function plane using a screen, a meter stick, and three small targets. The high-tech servo motors and 7975 is the heart of the function plane and it's possible to build this system yourself with directly from that motor. Control laser is important in a very large number of modern applications ranging from eye surgery to the cutting and processing of steels to targeting enemy aircraft and satellites. Using a low-powered class 2 laser, students apply linear and quadratic functions to move a laser beam in specified ways. In math classes, students learn about these functions typically written in the form y equals mx plus b and y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. In physics, they encounter the same functions but in the form x equals x0 plus v0t and x equals x0 plus v0 plus 1 half at squared. As they learn to understand the alternative forms of these functions as dynamic relationships, not just as puzzles to be solved for numeric answers, students are able to control the motion of a laser beam to achieve a wide range of different tasks. I'm going to load the function plane program. As it comes up, the first question is going to be, do we have analog probes? And the answer is no. We're only using time as independent variable in this case. But we are going to load the setup file, control the laser. To make sure that everything is set up and that we're communicating with the hardware, we're going to center the laser. And sure enough, the laser light did come on and it is located centrally, so we can continue. The setup file has configured a coordinate system with the center of the uh, function plane matching the center of the meter stick at 500 millimeters. It's using millimeters for the units. Uh, we're placing two objects on the meter stick, uh, one at the 300 millimeter mark and one at the 600 millimeter mark. And the system is configured for the front of the meter stick, which is where the targets are located. And the first task is simply to move the laser beam smoothly from the left target to the right target in 20 seconds. To make that happen, one step is to set an initial position for the, the laser. All that really does is to pre-position the laser before it starts the actual motion. And one possible proposal for carrying out this motion would be the function th that x is equal to 300 plus 50 times t. Uh, this is supposed to happen in 20 seconds according to the task we've set. And so we're going to set the timeout to be 20 seconds so that the motion will actually stop after 20 seconds. Start the motion. And the laser beam is off and running, and in fact, it looks like there's something wrong because we're well short of 20 seconds and we've already gone past the target. So it looks like that is probably not the correct equation. Uh, it may need some little more analysis, uh, some calculations of the desired velocity, for example to discover that the problem is in the 50 and second try based on some actual calculations might be 15 in that part of the equation. And when we try that, the laser dot is indeed moving more slowly than it was before. In fact, at a rate of 15 millimeters per second, which should cover the distance between the two targets in exactly the 20 seconds we planned and looks like that was indeed what happened. The next task is to think about how we could change that function to make the target, to make the laser dot reverse its journey to go from the right hand target to the left target in precisely the same amount of time. Again we're going to set the initial position for where we want it to start, but the real control about uh, the position of the laser is within the mathematical function. And 
so we do need to change the constant term and since we want it to go in the negative direction we're setting it with a negative velocity now so the magnitude of the velocity is still the same and sure enough we now have the laser dot starting at the right moving at the same speed but in the opposite direction towards the left hand target and after the 20 seconds the position both from the readout and from the laser dot does match the, the intended 300 millimeters. The next motion we're going to try is identical to the previous one but to see if we can make this happen in 10 seconds rather than in 20 seconds. So we've changed the 15 to a 30, set the timeout to be 10, and wait to see what the results are as the motion begins. And it seems like we've gotten that one right. Once we've mastered motion at constant velocity, it's time to try some more difficult tasks. And to get things uh, prepared for that, we're going to uh, recenter the dot just to make sure everything is still in alignment. And the task now will be to move from the left target to the right target, still in 20 seconds, but to do it in a accelerated motion, which stops at the end of the 10 seconds uh, without depending on the timeout to actually make it start stop and the equation we might try here could be 300 plus 60 times t minus 0 0.5 times 6 times t squared again the same starting point velocity starts really very quickly but decelerates and at the end of 10 seconds really is at the 600 point and I think we've succeeded with that motion. Reversing this motion requires us to think about every part of the function including the uh, starting point the constant 300 becomes a 600 the initial velocity is going to have the same magnitude but needs to be opposite in direction and we also have to change the sign of the acceleration. Even though we want it to go more and more slowly, it's going more and more slowly in the negative direction, which requires a positive acceleration. Slowing down, closer and closer to the 300 point, and gets there in just the 10 seconds. We're now investigating what happens with our first equation for acceleration if we let it run for more than 10 seconds. And we're putting a target mid between the first two at the 450 millimeter mark. And we'll set the timeout now to be 15 seconds. Let's say it's halfway, that should be enough, shouldn't it? start the motion and just as it did before it starts out rather rapidly decelerates comes to an instantaneous stop at the 10 second mark and then begins to gain speed in the negative direction but after five seconds of gaining speed in the negative direction it was still well short of that midpoint so it looks like 15 seconds was not really the correct time to make it work some actual calculations involving perhaps the quadratic formula might give us a different number. And here we're entering 17.07, uh, starting the motion. There are limits to the precision of any real equipment. And the calculations here are only to the nearest five hundredths of a second. On the other hand, we see it slowing down, stopping instantaneously, starting the trip back. And at 17.05 seconds, it's very close to our intended target.